All right, thank you, Krista and uh, Coast, for the invitation to participate in this, uh, this panel. Um, I wanted to say that uh, when Krista um, called me up and, and uh, convinced me to kind of come here and talk about uh, kind of integrating socials and social and natural sciences together, uh, it was something that she said. It was she said, you know, we need to get out of the water. That's something that I've been actually thinking about and, and I teach about it quite, quite a bit in my classes. Um, and uh, that's really the motivation uh, uh, for being here. Uh, yesterday we had some really interesting talks. Uh, we had a talk on the effects of uh, temperature on, on seaweed. We had the effects of uh, ocean acidification and ocean uh, temperature on uh, a growth of abalone, which was truthfully uh, interesting. Uh, and importantly, they, the, the uh, presenter there actually said, you know, if this is a $27 million uh, uh, industry, uh, so that's kind of the link where, where I am. We even had a, a, a graduate student talk about coral reef uh, health in, in Morea, French Polynesia, and unfortunately, uh, microplastics in beer, which was not a good thing to hear. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, so the data that is out there, uh, including uh, all of that uh, that I learned yesterday uh, and uh, from uh, research that you're doing is um, is unquestionable. We have entered the Anthropocene, uh, where changes to uh, global uh, ecosystems are definitely a product of uh, our, our doing. Uh, global ambient uh, temperature and also sea, uh, sea surface temperature has, has changed. So Daniel Becker, for example, mentioned uh, a recent bleaching event in, in Morea, uh, French Polynesia, close to where I work in the Cook Islands. Uh, so that's, that's something that's really of concern. I think the key then is uh, looking at uh, all of these really important uh, uh, issues in uh, perhaps in a broader perspective. Uh, importantly, kind of em emphasizing how these fluctuations uh, are critical not only at the species level, but uh, to the local livelihoods that, that people who depend on them. Uh, uh, and I'd, I'd like to um, kind of address uh, then the important uh, link between the, the work that many of you uh, here are doing and the effects that changing ecosystem health has beyond that surface. Uh, my focus, and the focus of my research has traditionally been uh, uh, small scale uh, fisheries, mainly in island communities. Uh, so there are 50, about 54 million uh, fishers, artisanal fishers out there, plus 100 million or so that are also affected by, by the fisheries. 90% of the fisheries worldwide are small scale. Uh, so as an example, I'd, I'd like to take you to uh, three different locations uh, really quickly, uh, where I've done uh, some work on, on fisheries, uh, health, and, and economics, uh, uh, and food nutrition. Uh, so Providencia and Santa Catalina are uh, just a small island. Um, it's 180 kilometers uh, east of uh, Nicaragua. It's actually a Colombian island. I'm from Colombia. Uh, and um, what's interesting about that island is not only it's uh, cultural history, but really the, the important uh, importance of uh, their biodiversity. It is a biodiversity hotspot. It's got the, the second largest reef system uh, in the Caribbean. Uh, but, in, but importantly, it's also a source of nutrition and economic well-being for at least 25% of the, the people, at least directly. Uh, and in fact, some of the interviews uh, that I conducted uh, uh, revealed that about 80% of the fishermen there uh, are individuals who, lie, uh, who rely solely on the fisheries for their livelihoods. Uh, in the uh, western province of the Solomon Islands, fishing is equally as important uh, for nutritional security, uh, but it's not only um, ocean temperature and ocean acidification that they're worrying about now. It's uh, more largely large um, kind of pulse uh, issues that they're dealing with. Uh, 8.1 magnitude earthquake, for example, <laughs> Uh, uplifted the uh, the reef system and uh, some of the islands in uh, um, the Solomon Island uh, by two meters. So this is uh, a really uh, of, of concern, right? So if, if these people are uh, indeed uh, relying on these ecosystems, uh, then how how does that how does you know events like this uh, really translate on the ground for the people? So, as I was saying, uh, things like ocean acidification, sea temperature, combined with large-scale unforeseen events like that earthquake and tsunami have devastating effects on uh, areas where fisheries are important parts of, life, of livelihoods. 
Um, I spoke about the Cook Islands yesterday, 15 islands spread around uh, about 2 million square kilometers of the uh, Pacific Ocean, 12 of them uh, being, uh, being inhabited, uh, a thousand years of history uh, in there. Uh, that creates not only a, cult, a really unique cultural traditions there, but a deep knowledge, a deep understanding of uh, the local environment, uh, which they have been passing out around for, uh, passing down for uh, multiple generations. Uh, and today, uh, the importance of marine fisheries and nutrition there, uh, to an extent, uh, to the local economy as well, is really critical. But there are changes changes happening. I've visited uh, four islands there so far, and this is what the much of the reef system uh, really looks like. And I'm not a, a, a marine biologist by by any means, but I have uh, dove uh, dove done done dove. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dove. There we go. Uh, in many places, and uh, this is this is certainly not what I've seen in other locations. Solomon Islands is incredible. Um, in uh, the Caribbean, um, in Providencia, you have just amazing uh, sponges. But here, this is what what we're seeing. And if you look at these effects, uh, kind of in uh, outside of, of the water, this is the people that are being affected. You know, the people that are either uh, um, um, dependent on the fisheries, either for uh, for subsistence. For subsistence uh, nutritionally or economically uh, and locals are seeing these changes they're pr uh, prompting action locally the, these are uh, individuals who are taking out a couple of uh, fish aggregating devices to uh, figure out if they can actually bring back some of that those pelagic fish that uh, they don't see anymore at least not in the quantity or sizes that they're that they were there before so uh, then my job is to, to talk to people. That's essentially what I do as a social scientist. I, I do a lot of interviews. I do socioeconomic uh, uh, service. But if you want to kind of uh, uh, distill it down, I, I actually enjoy sitting down and talking to these uh, fishermen. You, you learn quite a, quite a bit uh, from that. You get information about local ecosystem health without even getting into the water. Uh, and this is really important if you are going to be doing research on particular issues that, are, uh, that you can see up here. So, and, and by the way, this is really particularly important in data poor regions. Not everywhere uh, do they have the luxury to have uh, uh, natural scientists that actually do research on you know, reefs or, uh, or uh, other biota. So this is, uh, this is where you, you can use that local, local, ecological logic, local ecological knowledge that has been proven to clo closely mirror some of the scientific knowledge that you are acquiring uh, through your research. Uh, so I wanted to, to kind of go back to ocean acidification for just a moment. This is, uh, I, I saw that one of the awards that was given uh, by COAST was on ocean acidification uh, and the effects on health and, and, um, uh, and um, uh, sea urchins. So I believe it's, it's really important to go beyond this uh, species level because while it's really critical, I think it's absolutely critical to understand the effects of ocean acidification on on things like uh, skeletal, skeletal structure and sperm mobility and juvenile growth. I think uh, one of the important parts of my work is actually kind of getting out of the water because urchins do get out of the water like horse. <laughs> uh, so it affects 300 uh, commercially licensed people here in California alone. I come from Santa Barbara, uh, that's where I live. That industry there is worth $3.3 million. So that's really where, where it, it kind of hits uh, you know, the nail on the head. You know, what does ocean acidification mean not only to the, the urchins themselves, but then get out of the water and see how it affects uh, local communities. Mm -hmm. And just kind of to, to close, I think perhaps uh, one of our collective weaknesses as both natural and social scientists is that we lack the connectivity really uh, necessary to engage a research collaboratively. Uh, thus being able, you know, if we do that, if we are actually able to kind of grab this, th these types of knowledge and uh, put them together, we, I think we're able to expand knowledge and expand expertise of the system as a whole uh, that is much more complex uh, than what we are able to gauge in individually. Thank you. Mm -hmm.